scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. seated. God bless you. We thank the Lord for the opportunity that he provides for us week after week to learn. Um, let me speak especially for those of us who are here. Be very careful so that we never get to a point where we become too familiar with the dealings of God. You know, sometimes the Bible says knowledge can puff up. That means that when you get to a point where truly in experience, you understand the ways of God, chances are that you can plateau at a dimension in the spirit and believe that that is all there is in the pursuit and the knowledge of God. And it's not, it's not a state that may be done intentionally. Usually, the Bible calls it the pride of life. The pride of life is different from pride. The pride of life is the self-glorification that comes in the face of obvious results. If you don't have results, you cannot have the pride of life. You can have pride, but not the pride of life. And I know that God has helped us and we have to be very careful so that we are not lost in the folly of achievements. Achievements are important, but they can be very destructive. Very destructive. Hallelujah. And so it's important that our hearts continue to remain malleable and open. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to teach on something very powerful. I, I believe with all my heart, um, if we're not able to finish it tonight, we can continue 
um, perhaps after the miracle service but um, you know we've been discussing along the lines of our convictions about God and the methodology please I want you to listen very carefully there is a formula for knowing God that means that the pathway to the knowledge of God is not one that is dependent on creativity. I've taught you and it will, I will continue to repeat it again and again. That when it has to do with your walking with God, creativity is not required. What is required is obedience and alignment. You are not at liberty to choose your pathway. You are not at liberty to choose your formula. It is not given to a man to choose how he wants to know God. That privilege was never given to the saints. At no time was any man given the privilege to invent his way of knowing God. Are we together? Creativity only becomes useful when that kingly dimension, when it has to do with the revelation to creation now, to creation that's where creativity comes as one of the doorways to manifesting dominion but as far as our work with god and our spiritual growth is concerned we are not given the liberty to choose the pathway the bible says ask for the ancient path and when you find it walk in it that means that your creativity is not required i say this because the man please listen man is like is like a raw material are we together and there is a process that god leads man through and the object what man should become is already known in the heart of the father are we together and the bible does not even hide it he already tells us who and what we should be like that means at the end of our journey we should become like an embodiment that is personified in jesus the christ are we together now so you pass a product from one end of the the machine or whatever it is and then you already have an expectation that if done well this is what should happen when a caterer or a chef gets to the kitchen to cook he or she already has an idea are we together of what the meal should become there is nobody who cooks properly and then does not have an idea and in many regards a clear picture of what the meal should become you don't have to wait for the food to cook to know what it should be from the start you already know are we together now many people can be with you in the kitchen there and not exactly know what because of the kind of combination but at the end you must know what you should be when a pilot is about to fly an airplane from one place to another the pilot although the pilot may not see where he is going most of the time the pilot already knows that i'm flying from lagos to abuja i'm flying from lagos to kaduna and so on and so forth it is not only god that wants to that should know what we should be even the be should have an idea of what he should become transformation is almost impossible when there is no reference you cannot become nothing so your transformation must be based on a reference i can tell you why many believers do not grow because one we are ignorant of the methodologies of growth number two we do not even have an idea we know in theory that we should be like by telling me that i should be i should be like um so 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 and so person and now i don't know that person so how can i know what it, if you tell me to dress promise please stand if you tell me to dress like promise right i will have to come 
I will have to see him and see how he dressed and then try to replicate the dressing. Are we together? But if I have not been able to see promise, I do not know him. It's going to be difficult for me. It's a standard that is almost impossible. Not because the raw materials are out of reach, but there is no reference. So the Bible says, looking up to Jesus, and he calls Jesus, not just Savior. Jesus has many names in the Bible. And one of the names, as far as our transformation is concerned, is the author and the finisher of our faith. Meaning that when you come into the faith life, the kingdom life, your gaze should continually be on Jesus. To refuse to be distracted by the vicissitudes of life and the things that can stem out of nowhere to set your gaze and focus on Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that now the Lord is that spirit, right? He says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then the Bible goes further to say now we all with unveiled face beholding him, not them, not it. Money is it. Fame is it. Are we together? Promotion is it. The Bible says don't behold it. You will get it, but the object of your focus is beholding him as in a mirror. He says we are changed from one dimension of glory to the other. Ever increasing glory. Even as by the spirit of the Lord. So the moment I set my gaze on Jesus Christ. No matter what it is that happens. Once my gaze is fixed on him. There is an assurance that eventually. I will begin to look like the one. That I'm gazing at. And as far as I've read my Bible. I do not see anything in Jesus that is not de desirable by men. Is it the crown upon his head? Is it the brightness of his glory? Is it the majesty that surrounds his throne? The Bible says, if I look at it, you know, we want the things that are on, in and around Jesus, and we want to get them looking away from him, focusing on those things. The throne room is a place of wealth and abundance. The throne room is a place of majesty and splendor. The throne room is a place of excellence. The throne room is a place of power. And so when I fix my eyes on Jesus, sooner or later you find out that you are looking at a man, but then you are becoming him. But not just him generically. You are becoming every dimension of him you are seeing. Are we together? So I fix my eyes on Jesus and suddenly something begins to happen to my finances i fix my eyes on jesus something begins to happen to my influence i fix my eyes on jesus something begins to happen to my understanding i fix my eyes on jesus something begins to happen to my authority he says looking up to jesus and if you do not have an idea of who that jesus is then it is dangerous because there are many things if no one ever tried to be jesus or god in the bible it would be easy but now there are many gods in the bible and there are many saviors supposedly that means if you don't know the one you are looking for someone else can substitute him and say i am god and you will innocently look up to that person or that thing believing you are looking at god and you will be changed into that thing it's only that at the end you will look at your life and say this was not how i started there will be no representation of beauty and glory in your life are we together so pray a prayer before i start open my eyes oh lord grant me the miracle of open eyes Mm. open my eyes to see a man cannot see until your eyes are opened hallelujah listen let me tell you this before we get to the word 
the more I know God and the more I study scripture, the more I know what our problem is as men. Let me tell you one of the major problems of men. We think revelation is something you get. Are we together? We know that our lives are dependent on the light we have. There is no place in scripture where a man was instructed to pursue light. Everywhere in scripture is light coming. Listen very carefully. For as long as you believe you have the power to get light, then the light of God will never come. These truths that we teach, they are very exact. It's a body of spiritual knowledge that is given to you. Don't forget this scripture. A man can receive nothing. A man can receive nothing. Receive nothing until it is given. What God does not send to you from heaven can never enter your hand. So th there's no point seeking around. Your assignment, when the Bible says seek and you will find, the idea is not to go around. The word seek there in its root word is not to search as it were. It's really the word position yourself. It's more of a posture than it is of a searching. There are things you can never see by studies. No. This is beyond the realm of education. This is beyond the realm of intellect. Although your intellect will participate in communicating it, but it does not come from the realm of intellect. There is a wisdom that is Sophia. Human wisdom is a product of age and your exposure to science. But there is a wisdom that comes from above. Are we together now? So I, I, I need you to understand that these spiritual things are not necessarily things that you learn. True revelation comes. You are made a partaker. You fellowship with that mystery. It's a fellowship. You are called into it. That's the reason why when you communicate that wisdom, the dimension of this is ancient, is older than you, predates you, predates your Christian experience, and even predates your level of spiritual exposure. It tells you that wisdom is coming from a realm that is older, higher, and more superior than you. So really, the prayer is not to... To search around the prayer is to position yourself so that that light can come to you but when that light comes to you and you receive it according to the authority of scripture the Bible says you must arise and shine if that light comes you can know when the light has come by the possibilities that are now captured in your life I will continue to teach us that our lives, not necessarily immediately, but our lives with time. And that time is not forever. And that time is not your lifetime. Your lifetime is too long. With time. Because we operate by times and seasons, it becomes unfair to expect everything to happen in your life in one day. No. No. You are not living in the realm of eternity. You are living in the realm of time. So many things in your life are time dependent. They are time dependent for three reasons. One, there is a spiritual law called the law of process. And so there are things in life that the speed has already been regulated by God. Your being serious with God or not cannot increase the speed. It will happen within that time then there there is time that is regulated that is based on your insight and obedience so you can slow down and increase that pace of achievement based on the insights that comes to you and the application of that truth 
and then of course time can be regulated based on the hindrances the spiritual hindrances are we together yes and the spiritual hindrances are only three number one covenants number two disobedience number three um what's the third one demonic attack the devil can hinder you i desire to come to you once and again but satan hindered us so satan can hinder men so i don't expect that pastor femi in one day on hearing the truth of scripture no matter how accurate i do not expect you to enter into the experiential fullness of everything overnight in fact in fact if that happens to you is proof that something went wrong and jesus grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men are we together ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me you would have just said all over the earth but he broke it into dimensions jerusalem samaria judea and to the utmost part of the earth so it's very very important but let me submit to you ask any man that has been granted access to the spirit of revelation if they are honest enough with you they will tell you it did not come from the abundance of the study of scripture the study of scripture is important it helps to prime your spirit man like you prime a pump but the real revelation comes from god to you it comes as light and then depends on the quality of your mental enlightenment to break it down into the truths that that light communicates god does not speak english god does not speak greek he doesn't speak french he doesn't speak spanish or hausa or english he speaks light his language is light are we together yes and the only faculty of your tripartite being that can receive light is your spirit man so when that light comes upon your spirit man you have it but then it is not useful to you being locked up in the realm of the spirit and interfacing your spirit and your body where it is needed remember the earth realm is where all these spiritual realities are required they are not just required to remain in the realm of the spirit otherwise there will be no need for transformation once that light comes upon you that's enough but you need it translated here and now are we together and that technology of transfer is what we must learn the eyes of your understanding being flooded with light that you may know so you begin to have understanding and when you have understanding i've taught you that this body does not have power on its own are we together when your spirit leaves your body you are called dead dead means that your body is inactive so the body is a slave somewhat or better still the body is an executor the assignment of the body is to execute the conclusions of your spirit your soul whatever your body decides i mean whatever your spirit man decides or whatever is decided in the solical realm your body is now authorized to execute it so if my body continues to go to region and continues to capture experiences that are destructive to the health of my life and my destiny the problem is not the body the problem is that something is happening in the realm of the spirit and if you are a believer then the problem is not from your spirit man the problem is from the solical realm that's where the battle is now why because he that is joined to christ is one spirit are, are you getting this listen what i'm showing you now are these are the fundamentals of christianity it's important that you know them
it's amazing how many believers get born again and they are absolutely clueless about the faith life and we preachers have a lot of repentance to do in terms of the miscommunication of truths because we do not guide believers methodically we just randomly bring truths anyhow and so they continue to receive truths that are not progressive there is no synergy in their growth they cannot connect the usefulness of a revelation to another experience so they have many experiences but they are disjointed i can't see the relevance of this topic to this one there should be a sequence are we together yes there should be a sequence to your spiritual growth that means that come my dear that means i should be able to teach you something now and then you come you should hold her hands you should be able to connect what i taught you are we together like a ladder it should lead you to the next you stand here level of life and then i should connect you this is how growth happens if your truths are not sequential you will get a lot of spiritual information but not coordinated enough to reveal Christ in your life. This is the tragedy of many believers. So when I switch on your laptop, I see many sermons. I see many topics. I see many um, exegesis of scripture. Theological dissertations that have come from different people, different schools of ministry, and so on and so forth. And on the abundance of those information, you can pride yourself to believe you are growing but the problem is that truths were supplied but not sequentially arranged are we together so somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about prosperity you don't know where it fits in the graph somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about character somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about service in the house of god are we together somewhere come in your spiritual life they taught you about demonology deliverance warfare somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about prayer are, 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 you, are you following me now somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about whatever it is now these informations are all useful but you find out that you have them Yet your life does not testify that you have light. The problem is not the scarceness of light. The problem is the sequential arrangement of truth. Notice how Jesus began to teach the people. Jesus officially started his mentorship with what we call the Beatitudes. It was an exe exegesis on the kingdom life. Gradually he began to lead them. Then he started getting deeper. He got to a point that was so deep, people ran away. And he said, will you also go? He said, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of life. By the time we get to John 14, 15, he's now introducing the Holy Spirit. Never did he introduce the Holy Spirit before that time. Then he got to a point where Jesus himself was almost frustrated. He said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot capacity capacity you don't have the capacity to bear them he says how be it no cause for concern when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you he didn't say he will give you truth many people want to get truth they don't want to be guided in truth listen carefully you can get truth but when you are guided you are shown the sequential arrangement of truth in a way and manner that can stamp the gates of hell this is where the problem is there is almost nothing you will tell an average believer that he's hearing for the first time it may just be in a more with more theological accuracy or with more intellectual prowess but the central thought is almost always known yet our results our lives are not looking for new things our lives are looking for a rearrangement a sequential arrangement something you knew before prosperity is why prosperity does not bless you are you getting what i'm saying now something that you should not hear there there are messages that you were supposed to hear first before hearing about success and since you did not hear it what is now light has turned to a sword that is killing you
it is for this cause that he gave unto some apostles and prophets are we together and evangelists and pastors and teachers are we together now and then the bible says for the equipping the perfecting the word perfecting there is the maturing of the saints when you give birth to a baby a number of us here have children at the back we have our lovely children they are enjoying the comfort of the first days and months of their lives now only a wicked mother will give birth to a child and carry stock fish and put it in the mouth of that child or carry um, cow tail are we together it doesn't mean cow tail is destructive to someone else that's an answered prayer at a level you will sit down and pray and God will supply but now cow tail will be required in that baby's life but somewhere but now when you give the child cow tail you give the child every kind of thing you will soon find out that your child is dead what killed the child food food did you ever learn that food can kill it's not only poison that kills it is not only wrong things that kill good things not arranged sequentially can kill the prosperity of fools shall destroy them it is not the prosperity is that that guy was a fool he needed to be wise first so you the word of god that was allocated to translate him from the realm of foolishness to wisdom and what is wisdom the bible says the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom so you taught that guy about prosperity and you did not inculcate in him the fear of god you watch what you would do to his mother or father when the money comes What I'm sharing is powerful. This is not even my message. I, I don't know how I got here. But this is powerful. Sometimes the Lord just distracts us like that to speak to people. It can be a prophetic word for someone. That look, 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 look. Your journey of ever learning. Your journey of priding yourself with the vastness of spiritual information will soon frustrate you. Because you will find out that someone does not have one tenth of your knowledge. But the little he has was so sequentially arranged. His life will show that he's growing properly. So the average church member doesn't even carry a Bible again. What's the point? Open to the book of First John. He said, I know this is the record. Look at the person who is talking. He daily loads us with benefits. The person who is talking now does not have transport back home. Now, I'm, I'm not talking of initial. I don't ever blame any Christian when it does not have results from the instance. It is okay and it is normal. But when you have dwelt around the place of light for a while and your light refuses to bear that witness, then it's proof that something is wrong. And we can easily diagnose the problem. Number one will be to check in the area of ignorance. If we find out that ignorance is not the problem, then number two will check the quality of the information. Be careful lest what you call light be darkness. So you can call darkness light. Isaiah chapter 9, when you read, I think verse 2 or thereabout, I can't remember. It says, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Until the great light came, they didn't even know that what they were walking in is called darkness. It says that they who were of the valley of the shadow of death, upon them a light has come. We can be galloping in a lot of ignorance justified either by science or culture etc and believe that based on the abundance of this information we have light there is the true light that lighted every man there are other lights that cannot light any man they can light other things but they can't light men hmm. 
animals have a principle that they work with is that true most of the principles that the animals work with are not applicable to men the principle the animals work with is light but that light cannot light any man in their world and in their kingdom and in their sphere of reality remember all power belongs to god so the principle there is not an invention of science it is god's allocation that helps the animal kingdom to also behave well but because we are the highest of god's creation many of those truths they are truths but not applicable to us there are some of those truths that are applicable to us that's why god punishes foolish men by sending them back to the animal kingdom he said go and study my ways as given to the ants you are a lazy man you are a sluggard you are reducing yourself through laziness so i refer you to a lower dimension of my kingdom study the ants that they do not have a king they do not have this kind of organization so when you study you come back every time men refused to learn the laws of their realm they were degraded nebuchadnezzar was turned into what what was he turned into for seven years only his brain was left the brain of a man but every other thing was that of a beast and there was a lesson he refused to learn as a man so when he became a beast he learned that lesson at the end of seven years nebuchadnezzar wrote a sermon you should pay attention to he exalted the name of the lord are we together now they know not neither will they understand 82 and verse 5 of psalms they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said or i have said ye are gods and all of you not some all of you are children of the most high the next verse is a tragedy it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so the tragedy please hear me again sometimes there are times that it's just plain ignorance are we together but there are times that it is not ignorance it is the inability to sequentially arrange truth many years ago the lord did something in my life it's a personal dealing so it's not something that you can build a doctrine out of um the Lord prohibited me from studying my Bible for one week, complete one week. That's why I said it's a personal dealing. Yours may be an attack. Don't mistake in that what that it may be the same thing because God did not tell you. Yours is laxity. That's why I said it's a personalized dealing. Satan uses words to deceive men. Ye are clean through the word that I've spoken to you. For one week, I did not read my Bible not because i didn't want to i didn't understand the morale of the dealing until i was done and this was the whole object behind it the, the, the entire focus the entire objective behind it was to bring me to a point where i would realize that i was ever learning but never coming in experience to the knowledge of the truth are we together so i was getting you know those days well now we're still passionate about god but there's something about the journey of a believer it's like marathon once they blow the whistle on your mark get set ready sometimes you are even your, your blood is as hot as whatever go and you see someone running as if that is going to stop just at the door so that zeal that fire greek this concordance lexicon you know just study anything once you see a strange word ah pneumatology okay this is i should add this very quickly homiletics homiletics ah so we were just learning things that were just scattered revelation spiritual but scattered 
and the rate of change versus the the effort was not commensurate and it was a call for concern and so god was trying to save me trouble i would have been in big trouble now let me tell you why many christians are angry and don't believe that others are using god's power entirely i'll tell you why they are aware of the effort that was put in to arrive to to take one step it's like they did a labor of five years so when they see you soaring in the spirit they say something is wrong something is wrong i started learning 10 years seven years five years ago and you just came and right now in two years you are in this level not so one of the greatest blessings that can happen to you is that when you are born again god plants you under an anointing and plants you under a grace that sustains enough spiritual intelligence enough balance huh spiritual intelligence and balance these two things grace and truth when it is grace alone you are in trouble when it is truth alone you are still in trouble it is full of grace and truth so when god plants you under a ministry or under a man of god many of us the real tragedy in your life was not the attack that came from your foundation the real tragedy now i say that respectfully was probably the spiritual system you were planted in when you got born again because your zeal made your heart open for any information unfortunately many of us received chaffs it didn't kill you but you were not healthy either because the prodigal son ate the food of of pigs he didn't die but you can't say he was healthy that's how it is spiritually please listen very carefully shepherds can destroy people how did moses find a wife read your bible it was shepherds that came to drive the women remember the family where Moses' wife came from. They were shepherds. The women would come to feed their cattle. And those shepherds would come to drive them and fetch water. And Moses came and beat the living daylight out of those people. It is important. There are shepherds that watch their flock by night. But there are shepherds that kill their flocks. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart. Please listen to this because tomorrow you'll be the one mentoring a lot of people. Spiritual growth is a school. It's a school with an exact curriculum. That God will help you. The sequential revelation of truth matters. It does. I'm telling you this. There are many things we know about God that are wrong. There are many things we don't know about God that should be known. The dimension of breakthrough you desire requires a certain kind of revelation. Light is the currency that we use to purchase spiritual realities. I used to think it's faith, but it's not faith. Faith is simply the credit card that you use. But what really pays for it is light. It, from the abundance of these things then you will know who god is and you can worship him in spirit and in truth there are things you can know about god that makes you unbendable immovable nobody comes to sway you toe and fro with every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive the bible says it's important now before i get to my sermon this is this i can't believe that i've still not started preaching look at these people please start look at these people which dimension of your spiritual life has not been arranged accurately there are people who are not even born again because you check the truths that they have salvation is not part of it they never got born again 
They were just born in a family. Just because you were not in a beer parlor does not mean you are safe. So they started like that. They started playing keyboard in church, like this guy is playing now. From keyboard, he became um, assistant music director. Are you seeing that now? From assistant music director, you became music director. From music director, you became deacon. Huh? Yes. From deacon, they opened a branch just when you were graduating. And they called you pastor, whoever you are. Now, the truth is that whether or not you think you have grown, according to God's order, there is a pattern. God is a God of patterns. He's not just a God of motion. He's a God of patterns. How you move and how you grow will determine whether you will become that which is in his heart. Now, this is the interesting thing about God. Even when you think you have been working with God, like we arrogantly say, for 15 years, the day he reveals himself to you, he will rearrange your life back. And sometimes when he, he rearranges your life by trying your works with fire, it's in the Bible. That means you can see a lot of achievements and the fire of his life will come. And all that will be left is your true state. That means God will say, you men say you are in level 5, you level 15. But really, you are just at level 1. Now, you are at liberty to choose whether you will pay the price unashamedly to start properly with God or allow the ego that you have to just make you continue. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So men can call you MOG. Men can call you Deacon. Men can call you this and that. But the truth is that if you are not growing and building according to pattern, I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But let me tell you, you are only wasting your time. When God comes, he never continues from where, what you were doing. Look at what happened to Abraham. When he met Abraham at all of the Chaldeans, this was his instruction. Abraham, come out of thy father's house and out of thy kindred i hope you know at that time abraham was not a failure at least he had some results he had 200 plus servants he had cattle he had a number of things and said abraham don't think i'm coming to continue from there i will start with you again let's start that journey this is what brought some of you here some of you are already pastors men of god leaders some of you here were youth pastors before you got admission you carried youth pastor mentality and just came and god said no way come and sit down and if you are not careful and please every pastor here this this an advice don't just see someone come because they said he came from so 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 ministry or so 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 parish and in that parish he was the music director and you just say, okay no problem come and sit down and play keyboard and the guy comes with that celebrity mindset because in his church spiritual growth is not necessary in his church just attendance and loyalty is what is and, and sowing of seeds here and there but now this requirement requires you to sit down many celebrities get born again i mean secular celebrities now they get born again and come to church and then we just transfer their fame of the world and just add anointing on it not god you are joking not god mm -mm. not god not the god of the heavens when you come everybody starts from class one even jesus when he came the father didn't even pity jesus to say okay you are jesus i mean this is me he started right from scratch at age 12 i imagine what was in the mind of jesus when he was reading himself thou shalt love the lord your god 
and the rabbis were saying, I hope you are learning it. And he was just watching. The force that holds what he's reading. And not even Jesus was promoted like that. He had to wait. At age 12, he was learning. What do you think you are to just jump the steps? Favor does not jump steps. So you hear that? Because our idea of shortcut must be balanced. Favor is shortcut, yes. But it is not shortcut to alienate you from information that you hear. Favor is a system that was designed to help you. Because men do not start life in an ideal way. Please listen. If I was teaching our precious school of ministry students the graph of life yesterday, the good old graph of life. If you are not part of school of ministry, join even if it's just because of that. If you don't change after that teaching, I don't know what will change you in this life again. The graph of life. Are we together? If I get born again 40 years, how many of you know that I'm blessed, but that's a disadvantage with respect to earthly time. We don't have forever on earth. Now, I got born again 40 years and someone got born again at age 3. Who has more advantage than the other? And don't say we are all equal. You are not equal. This guy has time. Time. At age 3, born again. At age 4, filled with the Holy Ghost. At age 5, be mentored by a visionary father. When that child becomes 12, he is now you of 70 at age 12. Now, listen, let me show you. Listen, listen, don't just laugh. Let me show you the relevance of things like mercy, favor. These things are not just random things. God looked at the way man works on earth and said, if I don't add these other things, man will never become the fullness of God's grace. So here and there, he interjects your work with life with these acts of his benevolence to help you this is where things like favor are important if you don't have favor in life you you will succeed the problem is you only succeed if your life is ideal nobody's life is ideal including jesus they hid jesus because somebody wanted to kill him until herod died and he said okay now you can go there were things he would have been doing within that time Mephibosheth because a midwife I, 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 am I alone in this place this night Mephibosheth was a sincere person the midwife that held him was careless and because of her carelessness that guy fell down and broke his leg now sorry would not solve that problem because there are things he will never be able to do so how does God help this man's destiny by allowing him to live life the way it should be? No. So God introduces things like mercy. Thou shall arise and have mercy. And looks at him God. And he knows. He looks at the way man should go. And looks at the way man goes. This guy was called to be a prophet to the nations. This is his destiny. Are we together now? According to God's predeterminate counsel. The destiny of this gentle man. Like Jeremiah is to be a prophet to the nations. But it so happened that the womb that will give birth to him married an unbeliever. Now listen to this. I hope you know this is not his fault. It's just that the woman that should marry him because she didn't have enlightenment or she was deceived or misled. Now God married to a non-Christian. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Now this guy according to the blueprint of his life he should have finished his assignment at 70 if he starts his journey at one but because of what he has to fight an extra battle that was not in the original plan is now here and that battle is the battle of grafting him out of this family first and listen to me sometimes this gentleman has no legitimate ground to leave the house until he gets to university so his destiny will have to wait till what what age do you get to university 
17. This guy has to wait for 17 years. Are you getting the point now? Because according to God's blueprint, that is the safest way for him to live. If he lives in a way that they, they can kill him, and God for the sake of his destiny will not allow him that. Now, while he's waiting for that 17 years, his brain is not closed. He's learning a lot of things he must undo. Because you cannot be in my house and not serve my God. So while he's bowing down and doing all of these things, heaven is bleeding. Because according to the blueprint, by age five, this guy should already be seeing visions. But now, the, and Satan, when he peeps there, Satan will make sure that the clerics isolate this guy and further indoctrinate him to complicate destiny. I show you why it's dangerous. It's not enough to be saved. Where you are planted can determine how you grow. Please, parents, let me tell you something. And even those who have children now, don't sit down and say it does not matter where they hear truth. It matters. Sit down and waste your child's time hearing nonsense, wasting his time. At the end of it, you will find out that there is no sequential growth. Please listen. I'm telling you, I'm teaching something entirely different. This is my note. I've not even started. But if this is how the Holy Ghost wants it this night, I think it, this, is, this is a deep and mature teaching. I'm, I'm correcting the reason why the Christian experience of many believers is just, is just a buffet of frustrations. I agree that an area or two of your life may be trusting, be needing the hand of God. But when every area fails, something is wrong. This one is no longer the law of process. Apostle, nothing is working in my life. I've been a Christian from 2001. I tell you where the problem is. I tell you and the problem is not only an attack an attack looks like the obvious reason but i'm telling you now there is no prophet no pastor no apostle that will just pray over the issue of attack alone and then your life changes no you want holistic growth we must do the diagnosis tonight to know what is wrong back to my story this gentleman is loitering somewhere very far from god and far from destiny are we together now he gets to the university after 17 years 17 years has been wasted when he gets there now the devil would try to do all kinds of things for instance the devil can ensure that his first CGPA is 1.2 1. 1 point what who will listen to God under that kind of condition the pressure from life will make him say do you know what let me find a fellowship where in 30 minutes they finished now it doesn't mean please i hope you understand that i'm not being sarcastic to any the fire on this guy's destiny is being quenched because you you call it circumstances but these are intentional orchestrations and then this gentleman one day that's why inviting people to the house of God, if you are sure of the quality of what you are receiving, then it is evil to not invite people. This is not the issue of evangelism. This is you being an extension of God's mercy. Because the person you will be inviting, you think you are just inviting, you don't know you are acting prophecy. Imagine that this guy now is in Zaria in this situation. Imagine what heaven would do to you as the person who holds his hand to insist he comes to Koinonia. You thought you just invited a man, but you literally shifted a destiny. Literally. Because of one encounter. Are, are you with me this night now? It's very important. Some of you are now seeing. Now, do you know that heaven will rejoice when this gentleman comes? You have invited five, six people. But all of them don't have the same destiny. This guy ordained to be a prophet to the nations. Did you really invite one person? How many people did you invite? He will give you flimsy excuse. excuses. I've not eaten. And the Holy Ghost will say, feed him. And you are like, Holy Spirit, what is all this one? I don't have transport. And you will bring him. Now imagine that you bring him for koinonia and then I'm not ready. 
working for others the moment you enter except your feet done something must happen and reduce you back to look like your parents you can choose to believe what i'm saying no problem i don't know who prayed for you before you arrived but let me tell you sincerely if you know that there was no salvation in your past please hear what i'm saying seriously and pay attention to it altars are wicked they are like time nothing can fight them they will move slowly unperturbed by your pride until they catch up with you hallelujah i heard of a man of god that bought truck this dangote truck they kept advising him to diversify and that guy carried all his money i don't know how much that truck is but it's so expensive the moment the person bought that truck I, I he was coming along i think kogi or so the road that was how that thing just capsized it burnt in a way burnt everything inside and burnt everything about that man and the guy sat down and was almost killing himself who taught you what you know spiritually forget about the one koinonia taught you what is it resting upon because some of you this is why you are not experiencing the outstretched arm of god now i don't mean i don't mean i love the body of christ but i have to tell you the truth there are men of god and there are churches that are wonderful but they are not healthy for a foundation for your spiritual growth no the context of what is taught is pungent and dangerous for your spiritual growth salt is good but if you fetch one mudu of rice to cook and you fetch one mudu of salt to cook is that a blessing no. there are truths that are like salt they are sprinkled and is enough by the time you carry that truth the same size of rice and combine everything you will deal and kill somebody there are people the sermons they had is why they never saw the necessity of prayer in their spiritual work are we together they came from a highly intellectual family and you see people just laugh and say demons the only demon you have is a demon in your brain and your mind and the devil says wow this is wonderful for the child who comes from the church the house of an evangelist and a prayer warrior that is a correct sermon but for you who is coming from a foundation where they wrote your name when they gave birth to you while you were a baby your head was inside water and they were speaking nonsense to your destiny and you believe you would just casually say in jesus name i'm born again no sir the same way you don't say casually money come and it comes there are systems and there are principles the same way too if you are not careful you can be born again in a ministry that all they see is demons did you hear what i said everything is demons and then there is serious trouble because you will never have the enlightened mind that will keep you in victory your entire life will be full of warfare and fear because that is the context of the education that you received so when it's time to be responsible and understand the systems of the kingdom you will not so all you will keep doing in your life is to pray what knowledge should bring to you you are trying to get it through prayer are we together now when you should learn when you hear sermons like sermons on destiny help us sermons on excellence the law of honor you just ignore it and say all i know is that there is a witch in this family you will find out that even when the person you have been calling a witch dies you will celebrate and nothing will change because the issue of which was already settled but the remaining issues in fact the weightier matters that required spiritual enlightenment the person who mentored you did not call you to see the necessity it's a blessing to have a good pastor over you it's a blessing to have a man of god that can draw the boundaries that are relevant to your growth and construct you like a building i will give you pastors after my heart this is a mistake we are making in ministry now 
we just ordain people anyhow the moment someone looks handsome charismatic can dress well you just say come you are you are pastor this and that you arrogantly stand on stage and confuse people at the end of it the people don't know what they believe again it's nine o'clock let's pray we can't hear this kind of thing and just round up we are going to pray seriously first and foremost hold the hands of someone and blast in tongues first to prepare your spirit find a neighbor and pray seriously prayer is not for prayer warriors prayer is for any man who intends to be changed to be lifted and to become great in life and destiny Pray, pray, pray. my christian experience must be fruitful i must bear fruit i must bear fruit i must bear fruit in my life Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are going to pray this night for your destiny. You are going to call it by name and declare that in this season, my destiny open, 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 open up. He said, Lo, I come. Please pray, please pray. Destiny, in the name of Jesus, be open. My assignment, my destiny, open up. In the name of Jesus, no wasting time, no rambling around. Open up in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Outside, are you praying? Make sure you are praying from the depth of your heart. Shabbat Empra kato shekete neke teke 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 
Open up, open up, open up in the name of Jesus. Open up, open up. Open up in the name of Jesus. Open up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen to me. You are going to pray. And you are going to cry to God. And say, Lord, every, every disarrangement of truth in my life that has been responsible for my stunted growth, I pray by the Spirit of God, rearrange my life. Rearrange my destiny. What I have believed wrongly, correct it, oh God. I am open. I'm not a rebel. Let your emphasis be my emphasis. Pray. More than what a man of God said. Arrange my life sequentially. Arrange my destiny sequentially. Who am I to meet in this season? Who must enter my life in this season? Based on your arrangement. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please don't think you are, you are wasting your time. You are praying seriously. Now, I say this with all humility. Listen. Please listen. Imagine if till now I was still trying to hear God concerning koinonia. Are you seeing now? Imagine there are people according to the blueprint of your assignment you are not supposed to be looking for money now you are supposed to have it already because the next phase of your life is dependent on that supply there are people right now at according to god's blueprint the level of prophetic you should be operating in it is required for the kind of assignment but because you are still here god cannot move with you hear me Hear me. There are ladies, according to God's blueprint, you should be ready for marriage now, based on the sequence of your destiny. But it's right now you are getting serious with your life. Hear me. Hear me. There are some of you, according to the sequence of destiny, it's you and your elder brother that should be standing as pillars. But the devil killed your brother from bed. That means you are carrying the burden of two people. You need your grace plus the grace that will come on you else. So when you pray one hour, God will say, add it all. Because you were supposed to pray only an hour. Because there's someone else holding it with you. But he's alive and he's drinking around. And God's agenda must move forward. So you must build stamina to be able to carry it. Listen. Listen to me. Please listen. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Don't think I'm just talking anyhow. Listen to me. Please listen. There are families, according to the design of God, you are supposed to be three men, but the devil made sure no man come to that family. It was later on you showed up, sometimes as the last born. 
and now you have to stand in a position of three men as one man there are families it's supposed to be you and your father and your pastor but now your father did not serve the Lord or your father has died God will not change his purposes his plans can change but his purposes remain eternal listen listen there are families according to God's design you should never even try to say okay I'm looking for two or three jobs because according to that design your father should have been responsible to help you with an inheritance but now the devil hijacked that destiny and the way you are right now if you fail there is no more hope for your family because everyone that came to help the devil took them out of the way you know it i like you to pray and say lord i will not fail you and i will not fail destiny is someone praying lord i will not fail you i will not fail destiny if it depends on me then i will not fail if it depends on me if it depends on me to change the course of my family if it depends on me to enthrone jesus over my family if it depends on me i will not fail someone pray pray with the picture of your loved ones in your mind pray with the picture of your children on your mind pray with the picture of your destiny on your mind if it depends on me, I will not fail. It may take time, but I will not fail. Hallelujah. I wish you people knew that song. Atmosphere, shift now. Huh? You may not know it. I just, I just had that song in my spirit. I will not fail if it depends on me. I think about my life with all humility. And I think about the destinies that would have gone down even if I were born again and I refused to answer the call. Listen. The next prayer point. We are praying. Listen. Spirit of the living God, if I am found anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Bring me back to the place of destiny. Lift your voice and pray. If I found myself anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Please pray, pray, pray. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny geographically. Align me to destiny relationally. Align me to destiny financially. Allow me to align me to destiny spiritually. Align me to destiny, oh God. Pray that prayer and watch your life change. Align me to destiny. Let me stop rambling around. Bring me to the place, the path of destiny. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. It was never my intention, never my intention to be in Zaria. It would have been the last place for me to think of being at this time 
but you see there's something about destiny there are people when the devil wants to waste their time they will get american visa and travel and roam around america just because you are making some money does not mean you are in destiny look at how god brought some of you here god carried you from different places is destiny forget about the story that brought you align me to destiny let me not find listen let me tell you this there are people when the devil wants to destroy their destiny they will receive certain kinds of promotions you would think uh, is promotion is not wrong in itself but they will receive a promotion and become a ceo and that ceo will not allow them do and be certain things life is more than money oh. life is more than fame are we together next prayer point lord where am i supposed to have been in destiny that i am not i pray by the spirit in this season take me there take me there i should not be at this level in ministry financially maritally spiritually pray by your spirit bring acceleration to my life there is no more time to waste the voice of my generation is crying speedy manifestation oh god of all that pertains to my destiny in this season hallelujah hallelujah now listen to me the next prayer point i will have to teach you a little to understand covenants are systems of advantage please listen a covenant is more than an agreement it's a system that provides an advantage in life listen to me carefully you reign in life based on the privilege of the advantage that you have are we together now yes advantage every time you see anything that spells an advantage in the bible you must study it everybody rose based on an advantage joshua stood before jericho helpless like any leader would be except that he was standing on an advantage it was that advantage that brought the captain of the lord's army he said i am here daniel would have died in babylon except for the advantage he was standing on and based on that advantage gabriel came and said i am come to give you understanding and he understood the times that was allocated for the liberation Abraham was standing on a covenant and so he saw in a vision that God's people would be in captivity for 400 years please listen to me this thing I'm teaching you is a deep teaching your destiny will remain on the ground until there is a system of advantage I repeat the knowledge of God is not based on covenant your spiritual growth but kingdom advancement and the advancement of your life and destiny is based on systems of advantage are we together and there are many systems of advantage i hope that in the coming weeks just brace up for the teachings that will come in the coming weeks because there are things that we need to learn 
advantage. There are systems of advantage. Listen to what Haman, when Haman went to his family, his brethren, and Haman told them, he said, look at what Esther did to me. They put their hands on their head. They said, Haman, you are finished. This woman is a Jew. Looked at him and said, whose son are you? Not who trained you. Not what weapons do you have. I need to know what advantage you are carrying to stand before Goliath. When he stood before Goliath, Goliath said, am I a dog? Am I a dog that you stand before me and come with a sling? Are you trying to catch a goat? And David said, you come to me with your spheres and your bows. But I come to you, listen, in a name. Ah, I wish we could deal with this. Because you see, a name in the spirit is a revelation of a dimension of God. God's dimensions are stored in his names. I came with a name. Are we together now? And foolish Goliath, instead of him to ask, are you a Jew? He kept quiet. What do you think made Jericho to close their gate? They said, who are the guys coming to attack us? The moment they said they were Jews, they close the gate. Close it quickly. We know these guys. There is a track record. There is a strange God that works with them. Ah! There are men who there are things they are standing on. And based on those systems of advantage, I tell you, they can fail in other things, not finances. No. They can make the most stupid financial decisions. Yet what they stand upon will bail them out. Have you seen families like that? All their children must be leaders. Must be leaders. It doesn't matter what happens. Whether it's a village school or whatever, the girl must be head girl. The boy must be head boy. In a class of many people, eventually they will be leaders. When you say the J.F. Kennedy family, what comes to your mind? There are families that are a dynasty. It's not just business they were passing. They were platforms. Whether with fraternity with Satan or fraternity with God. But there was a system of advantage. I will never forget. I've always been a very brilliant person. I remember I was in Genesis 1. This issue changed my life. I had always been the best student effortlessly the best in fact i didn't know that people used to read during exams nobody ever asked me to go and read if you were in my class just give up in terms of position you are wasting your time it's not only that i will take first the gap i will give you will make you not to come near me again and something happened when i was in secondary school the first time i was the best student the second time i think i was the best student or so but the third term, the guy that took that before, the parents moved to living faith. Listen, oh, they moved to living faith. It didn't reach three months. They did anointing service for that boy straight when he came and wrote exams. When that now, this is not about first or second, I'm just using it to explain something. When the results came out, and I looked at my result. I looked at the guy. It, it wasn't, you know, I didn't know what I knew now. You can imagine a small boy. I said, no, something is wrong. Something has to be wrong. Because my best performance was this point. Something has to be wrong. That guy was, his average was just with like five marks. I said, no, there has to be a recalculation. Something is wrong. And then I met him. I said, in the spirit of sportsmanship, congratulations and he laughed he told me that they did anointing service for them in living faith i said what is living faith it was later when i understood i said ah i was standing on my brain he was standing on an altar listen sir let me do this come tell us your testimony now everybody stand and listen to this testimony go ahead um 
I am a pastor. I was in Mubi before we got transferred to Abuja. Because of the distance and the financial constraint, we decided that my wife will not return back to school. So during uh, the last uh, second semester exam, she didn't go, and then we attended Koinonia, uh, the miracle service, uh, last month, and then we the resolved that she should go back to school. When she returned to school, they uploaded their results. Lo and behold, she had results. And all of the results were A. I mean B. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, you, you, I, I called him out so that he would talk. This is a pastor. She didn't do second semester. What, what second semester? Semester. Because of, listen, because of financial constraint, which is justifiable. They now came down. He relocated. And then when all of that happened, he now planned because he had been, had been in touch. So it's not something that we're just talking. I've been in touch. This is not a license for laziness. No. It's just showing you that there are possibilities. That's why I said the prayer I want you to pray now. If I don't teach this, you will not understand it. Woe betides a man who stands alone. Listen. Bishop Oyedeko, listen. One man of God in the south-south, he was about to start ministry. And then he went to Bishop Oyedeko for prayer and advice as you know they were releasing him and bishop oedipo spoke to him in yoruba i wish i'm a yoruba person he said never fight alone that's my advice for you never fight alone i show you why many people continue to fall victims in life so the plan was that they will go back and then let the wife now register. Now that God has helped them, things have started changing. I'm explaining the story for you. They now went and said, okay, let's see how far. As they printed results, second semester result, A and B parallel. That's what came out as the wife's result. This man is a pastor. He has a congregation. He's a spiritual father to many. He will not come and mess up his integrity. And it's, this is a father with a wife and children. Listen, it is not to endorse laziness, but it's to let you know that this kingdom is a compendium of possibilities, limited only by your spiritual understanding. God bless you, son. We are going to round up, but let's. We are going to pray this prayer systems of advantage abraham was an idol worshiper from a place called or of the chaldeans chaldeans were were idol worshipers they were necromancers when god called him out it still was not enough god met him and said i need to enter a covenant with you if I just call you and I say, let's go to the promised land, you will still die. I have to provide a platform that becomes the basis of this new order. Are we together? Many of you do not know that the secret to the future, you've heard me say it, is in the past. Before you move forward in life, you have to go backwards. Please hear what I'm saying. All these names that we have given this phenomena in life, they are, whether you call it failure at the edge of breakthrough, whether you call it spirit husband, whether you call it spirit wife, whether you call it rise and fall, all those are invented names. That's to tell you many people are having the same experience. That's why they could receive it and understand. The teaching that I did, the mystery of deliverance, part one to four, that message has delivered people until we stand before God to see how many people were delivered. When truths are taught with imbalance, it can destroy. 
listen there are things that God does for the sake of the fathers there are things that God does for your own sake did you hear what I said there are some of you now you are in certain levels of blessings and favor and in the name of honesty you have nothing to do with it maybe your mother used to cook for pastors listen no before you were born your mother just said me you am not a woman of god but all i keep doing is if there is any pastor i will make sure i cook for them one day she cooked for a man who was not a pastor she cooked for a system and he swore a blessing and say may your children be great now listen that looks like a pronouncement it's more than a pronouncement and now you showed up and when satan is supposed to destroy you between you and the destruction the pronouncement comes in between you my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my mouth the same way noah looked at africa and cursed africa and said a servant of servants shall you be as born again as we are that cause is still in place today now people are following from america and the rest and i don't mean to insult you but you will see the level of spiritual depravity that is in america the decadence right that when you put sex on phone male of or on a form male or female it's not only male or female that is there now male female and then some others yet in the midst of it you expect god to be angry and stand up and say america your glory has been withdrawn <sighs> every time he wants to do that someone's prayer stands every time the coming of jesus was about to be delayed the prayer of anna the prophetess stood in the realm of the spirit maranatha come 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 i told you about my life that my mother prayed a prayer and had an agreement with god she told the lord she said lord my own father was a pastor he died serving you he said please use either my brother her younger brother now or any of my sons to continue let it not be that this spiritual heritage is lost she thought it was just a casual prayer and then i showed up innocently but something was a system of advantage there are some of you today you don't have any past you don't have any bad record it's not because you are a nice person you are one of the most loose and careless person but simply because there was an ordinance upon your life that prevented all sorts of evil from happening to your life because of the destiny attached to you let me tell you this you have to know the systems of advantage that god provided are we together the yoruba people were given a grace upon their minds it's a grace god gave that territory a grace now what i'm teaching you is truth from god's word the the yoruba people as a nation were given many graces among them was the grace for the prophetic the eyes that see not necessarily hearing but the power of sight which was an extension of intellect is a grace please listen to me let me show you mysteries Igbo people were given the grace of courage and creativity it's a grace that was given that you can drop an Igbo territorially is a grace any poor Igbo man you see is a lazy man because they already have an advantage listen the north and that includes the middle belt the grace is the grace of leadership and governance it's a grace 
this is what the northerners take advantage of they study these things they don't just come out for election they know that we're standing on an advantage these are ordinances my brothers and my sisters in mount zion the side of the north the city of the great king Are we together now? Leadership. So many times, when God wants you to be a spiritual leader, listen carefully, no matter where you are, in your voyage, you must touch the knot. No matter who you are. Listen carefully. This is where Bishop Oyedeko started from. This, no matter who, he will rout you because you must drink of that grace. How do I explain this thing? Are we together? When you say Igbo people like money, they don't like money. It is an advantage that has carved out a niche for them. Governance. There are few men of God who now lead the body of Christ who do not have an affiliation with something that brought them to the north. Notice that God, when God wants to announce you in Nigeria, you must touch Lagos. If your feet does not touch Abel Kuta and Lagos, you cannot be global from this country. Whether as a secular artist, I think we'll just end for today. It is those who have the eyes that see, that know. Hmm. Many of you don't know why God carried you and brought you to Zaria. It's not just because of Koinonia. It is because these are the systems of God. He will bring you and you make contact with the possibility that he planted within that territory. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, the, the systems of advantage that you have provided for me, I walk into it. I walk into it. There is a heritage that we have. A territorial heritage. An intellectual heritage. A spiritual heritage. I want to 
Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen. We're rounding up. I want you to get tonight's teaching. Please. I'd like you to give tonight's teaching to anybody you find. And tell him, please. Please. Listen. In fact, you can tell him it's a birthday gift from apostle to you. Take. Listen. This is not the kind of teaching that you hear tonight and say, wow, wonderful. <clears throat> this is the kind of teaching you will sleep and wake up with. There are many things I have said that you did not hear. But I guarantee you that if you understand what I taught this night, there is no limit to your life. You can take advantage of everything around you. Every territory has an advantage. You can tap into the advantage that comes with it. Your church has an advantage. Your soil has an advantage. Your family has an advantage. I know your father was a herbalist and a priest. But that is the corrupted destiny of a prophet. There is still an advantage that can be seen and can be activated. Hallelujah. This is how we grow in the kingdom. We don't just grow by will. We don't just grow by luck. Listen, let me tell you this. This night, I just chose to show you these are the things that work in the lives of extraordinary people. It's not just that things are working anyhow. No. You see all this anointing, the power of God breaking out anyhow. It's not... There are systems of advantage. Your life must learn it, you must know it, and you must know how to engage it. Every Jew in Israel knows he cannot fail, born again or not. Meet any Jew. Put any Jew to be a board member of your company and you watch what starts happening. No matter how foolish the decisions are. The wealthiest people in America today are Jews. The greatest brands in the world today, they are Jews. There is a history to the things we see. There is a reason why Boko Haram thrives in the north. They go outside the north, they will fail. North is the seat of governance. There is an advantage in the territory. They know this by divination. The East is always a place associated with wisdom. The Magi, wise men came from the East. It's true. The wickedness came from the seat of governance. Herod wanting to kill Jesus. So it should not surprise you that terrorism springs from the North the seat of governance and strangely enough the place that also looks like the seat of governance is also the place where revival arises hmm. that is the reason why you see the moves of god ministries like koinonia all these things are not they are not guessings they are pieces of a divine puzzle. <laughs> are we together? Many of you are looking at me dumbfounded. Let's round up by one last prayer. Father, in the name of your son Jesus Christ, reveal to me every advantage that makes for my excelling in life.
from scripture from the ministry that I am under the grace from Christ himself the chiefest of all advantages reveal to me let me know what I stand upon and the possibilities that are associated with that covenant please pray hallelujah hallelujah you know why the holy spirit decided to move this way to share this these are not things i share in a general meeting like this these are truths that you share when you are talking to leaders i don't know why god decided to allow this thing that's why i say please get it and listen to it you will think you understood what i said no your spirit man only appreciated what i said you will need to settle down because you will hear something from that message that will control your results and open you up to the next season this is how i live my life i never stand anywhere in ignorance of the advantage this world is too wicked you don't guess your advantage on the battlefront it's too risky tomorrow i'm on my way to lagos again i came back from kogi state yesterday there is an advantage i stand upon that gives me security over death my life is a very risky life if you live this kind of life and this kind of schedule and all you say is i know god will protect us one day you will land in trouble i am a giver as a person is both an office a hobby a desire and a responsibility and i know that the way i give is not recommended for an average person I'm telling you this you give that way you will have problems with your wife your husband your children that means there must be an advantage this is more than financial intelligence there must be a system provided that can allow for that dimension of God to continue unhindered my work should do if you do what I do for two weeks you will have a health challenge sincerely i'm telling you this i've been out of this town since saturday only returned yesterday had to rush come for school of ministry and all today i've been busy doing a lot of things i'm here now this night as soon as i'm done i'm going to be counseling for over the next maybe two three hours heading back home barely have time to sleep tomorrow i'm heading to lagos straight into the morning session of a meeting and yet tuesday is my birthday you live like that something will happen to you if i've not collapsed it's not just because i'm wise there is something you must stand on there must have been something god told you or god told someone you are under or god connected you to there has to be something there are ministries who don't understand this they are anointed but they pay every bill by themselves they never experience help because they have not known how to tap into that advantage there are some of you you have never been helped by anybody you have not lacked but you don't know what it means to be assisted our lives are full of systems of advantage. Ah, 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 
Hallelujah. Please pay attention. The meeting is on. I'm seeing ministering spirits. It's a class of angels. I'm seeing them walk inside and outside. Just let me do what is happening. Ministering spirits. There are not many times I see these kinds of angels. I'm seeing them walking inside and outside. Ministering spirits. They are angels that impart strange levels of graces. Ah, ah, yeah. They will touch you where you are. It will be like fire. They will touch you where you are. As they touch you, they release your miracles. As they touch you, they release your breakthroughs as they touch you they break those chains nah. they are touching you on behalf of families touching you on behalf of families skatapakatabaratapash <laughs> direction that's what i hear god is giving men direction it's like an anointing it will come on you outside and inside direction an end to that confusion right now it's coming like light but then you will hear him direct you direction 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 what is that area of confusion his light shines upon it right now for marriage direction 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 for where to settle down geographic location direction is coming by the holy ghost direction somebody is praying and say lord show me the lord is saying i am showing you is coming upon your spirit i'm giving you direction on what to do direction hallelujah i'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone and the Lord is saying, take it out. Lord, where are those people whose destinies have been buried? As I'm speaking right now, inside and outside. Right now, right now. As I speak, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, where you are sitting, you will receive a visitation. I pull it out. This is a miracle service. I pull it out now. Oh yes, release that lady. I see it in the spirit. Release that lady right now. Release that lady's destiny.
Something is happening to you where you are. Something is happening to you where you are. Begin to receive it by faith. Like the dew of heaven resting in this place, inside and outside. Lord, we receive what you are doing. down if you can those under the anointing just leave them John 3 16 I just want to The Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump. You have a lump in your left breast. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it and come out right now. Right now. I don't know why God is just interrupting. Please check it. Check it. Check it right now. In fact, I see three people. Check it. This is a family. Please, we are not playing games. Inside and outside. I'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they, when they are alright let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly Augustina Augustina I'm hearing a name like Augustina Augustina there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly Augustina the Lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what I'm seeing oppression as is happening to you there's somebody outside this same anointing is touching the person outside the second overflow the anointing of the spirit is touching somebody outside the Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft it has tied your life and your family down and the Lord is telling me release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina and as it's happening to you it's also happening to that other lady in the name of Jesus I release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released 
it's time for you to testify i release both of you prophetically in the name of jesus christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the spirit in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah i'm seeing a whole family that came there is a family god wants me to minister to you are five five people i don't know if there is a mother i'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you're five in all Please, when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for god so loved the world for god so loved the world and the bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son please listen don't worry about what is happening just let me have your attention please he says he gave his only begotten son this we can take it from there that that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now Please help her wrap her i command that spirit to leave her right now now and never return in the name of jesus release her family release I see a lot of money being tied release it now as you go in the name of Jesus the Christ Hallelujah. so the Bible says he gave his only begotten son hallelujah for God so loved the world. The word there is cosmos. The social system that has to do with people. Listen please. And has to do with the entire territory. The social system. He says for God so loved the world. And he proved that love. Listen, listen. Because love must be manifested to be appreciated. Are we together now? And the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son and please don't be confused there is a name that son is called jesus because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father but the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten right until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophets abraham samson isaac judges everything was tracing to the genealogy of Jesus Christ and then the Bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth listen Jesus came with a message and his message was very simple he said repent the word repent is not the word turn from your sins no preachers preach that 
as a result of lack of understanding the word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another please just be patient with me this family or minister are we together now turning from one direction to the other but the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ he said men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said repent for the remission of your sins so the Bible says he gave his only begotten son you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all of my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today in heaven if you know it just sing it with me I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one that for me gave your life. like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money he gave he donated and Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things listen Jesus did not just come please I want you to pay attention it's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone he came to show us how we should look so when he walked upon the earth he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created he was invincible the Bible records above situations above circumstance with unlimited power yet a man of extreme self-control he knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet there would be so many sick people like the 10 lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry people tried to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 no, no. i can of my own do nothing as I see my father do. So he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life. A life that is completely yielded to the will of the father. Void of self-ambition. Void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ. A life that is crucified with Christ. Are we together now? And then... The Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him. John chapter 6 says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be part of me. You cannot have my life. So while they were taking the communion, they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the bible says he went to gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood 
Afterwards, he was ready to be crucified. And brothers and sisters, I know that we celebrate Easter. Today is Good Friday. Pain is what made today good. Are we together? Sacrifice is what made today good. If he refused to lay down his life. Listen, when Pilate looked at him and said, don't you know I have the power to free you? He said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father. He said, I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again. In other words, I was not coerced. My love for you made me to sacrifice my life, my reputation, and everything. We talk a lot about Good Friday, but we never know what made it good. This is what made it good. That a man gave his son, then the son gave his life. Are we together now? It's one thing to give your child. It's another thing for the child to agree. He can refuse. Jesus had the right to refuse. In fact, he was tempted to negotiate it. He said, Father, if it be possible, you are the all-wise God. There is another way you can do this thing. But then he remembered, nevertheless, I told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant. Are we together now? The Father gave Jesus. Jesus gave his life and don't be confused he gave his blood he gave his righteousness are we together now he gave up his position and when he was doing that he had you in mind listen listen he never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself the bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity yet without sin but he took your place because the Bible says we all like sheep have gone astray. Right? He said every man has gone his own way. With our ideas about God, our ideas about success. Would you give our mother a chair please? Let her just sit down. I'll minister to you in a moment please. At least let her just sit down. Hallelujah. Well all of you, you can sit down. I'll call you now. They're all looking at me. Um, sit down especially this my friend friend how are you what's his name Aaron Kelvin just get somewhere that they can sit around and I'll attend to you now just five minutes let me establish what hallelujah so please come sir I offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me and the bible testifies that i have no power in myself and then someone comes and while i'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says i love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way this is what i want you to do stand back and watch me pay the price and while he was on the way while they were flogging him in his mind he was saying mankind i hope you are watching this would have been you i hope you are watching i hope you are watching the scars as he began to bleed he said i hope you are watching see if two people come and they tell you they love you the best answer to give those two people is i'm watching because love is a verb are we together now? I am what? All kinds of things have told you they love you. But they left you. But Jesus said, watch my love. I'm not going to make noise about it. First stand back. And while they flogged him, he said, if it's for you, I will still go the extra mile. And they flogged him. The father gave him, he gave his health. The father gave him, he gave his prosperity. The father gave him, when we say his life, let's break it down. What, what is in his life that he gave? Because that's what he gave you. What was in the life of Jesus? 
the ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases the father gave him he gave it away in exchange the bible says he was rich but he gave it are we together now he had a reputation of dominion but he laid it aside i hope you know that they stripped him naked the covering you see around is just for social reasons when you're watching movies a 33 year old man naked children watched him adults watched him people mocked at him and said you claim to be a king and he said this is all for you are we together blood dripping out from every part of his body every time he was tempted to give up he said no if i give up where i stop is where you must continue and i know that even if it was for the last nail you still would not be able to take it see listen if you think what happened on the cross is what jesus just died for physically you'll be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified what he stopped you from was not the physical activity it was what was happening in the spirit you can do the physical one i guarantee you people have been crucified but you don't know what that meant in the spirit a lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening he became adam from gethsemane from gethsemane to the cross he was no longer the christ he was jesus adam the very man of sin mortality came upon him please listen and the father kept watching he had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive so there was no negotiation about receiving the blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory are we together now when they took him to that cross and they nailed him as his blood began to drip upon the earth and in that excruciating pain it was a way of torturing criminals he was not just looking at mary and john he was looking at you he was looking at me he was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness and he said if it's for you i will do it but he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight three words that represented victory it is finished oh hallelujah i didn't study english but i know that when a man says it is finished it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed so we have to start another one it is finished the question is what is the it that has been finished first that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished that 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 christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings having to atone for your sins by your own strength i brought it to an end that ability of saying qualify and come to god he said it is finished you now will come through my own invitation my own access like i organize a program and I invite someone and while you are about to drive him I say no 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 that's my guest come but you are not only his guest he also made you the one to be celebrated please listen there is a dimension of this we have not learned and this is what I want to teach us when Jesus went to hell and met Satan a discussion transpired and Satan said remember Adam and he said i don't remember adam i am him don't you see this is adam and satan knew it was true because only adam had the right to collect the key no other man could collect the key and so he went as the second adam and said you killed adam and every man that came from him 
let me have the keys revelations 1 verse 1 when you read down what i am he that was dead but now i am alive and i hold the keys he collected the keys listen access to the earth access to dominion access to god's life that's the most important part the life of god i'm going to explain it when he resurrected watch this did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven it would just be that he was victorious and then the bible says according to the book of hebrews that he went to heaven as the high priest the lamb the sacrifice as everything and then he took his blood poured it upon that tabernacle and said father you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just god your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice the bible says they are the foundations meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it but now he says every time you think justice let mercy begin to speak watch this I really want you to get a revelation of this it will change your life every time the voice of judgment the voice of mess of of justice begins to speak i will not fight it but remember that i not only paid the price i paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path are we together now when that happened a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen you did not participate in anything but out of my love i took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in Christ, every man's iniquity, every man's um, basis for accusation was nailed in Christ. Paul saw this in Galatians 2.20 and he said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, he said, I live. Yet not I, but Christ it's an exchange he died for me now i live in him in other words the day jesus christ dies there is no reason why i should be alive because we're in him so my life is no longer something i get outside of him my life is an overflow of what i have received from him and he so designed that from that point hence listen everything i derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me 
and I abide in him, he said, the same will bear much fruit. He said, for without me, the word without means outside of me and everything that I have done, ye can do nothing. The basis of the believer's victory is what Christ did on the cross. But not just what Christ did on the cross. Because that's what a lot of people say. Oh, I know what he did. No. Let's continue. John 3 verse 16. Please give it to us so that we can finish up. It's not enough to know what Jesus did. That's not where I'm going tonight. This is the part that concerns you. That whosoever believes. Believes what? No, no, no. It didn't say that whosoever believes anything. There is a specific thing you have to believe to have life. You can believe Jesus is a prophet. It never gives life. You can believe Jesus is a healer. It doesn't give life. Are we together? He says, believe in him. Who is the him? Who is the him? No. You see, you see where we miss it? We have been believing in rubbish. Who is the him? Who? He said, God, no. Believing in God doesn't give you life. Who is the him? That's where I want us to get to tonight. You, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life. We believe, but what do you believe? Are we together? You can believe the shepherd. Believe me, you will not be saved. Believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation. Are we together? Believe in him. Who is him? The Bible, I love the way the Bible puts it. As many as believed in him. See that? Brothers and sisters, I am many things. And all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me. Are we together? A child believes a father a worker believes a CEO. A Jimmy's daughter believes in her father. She doesn't believe in a CEO. We believe in a Jimmy Adegbeye, the multi-millionaire. That's what you believe. You will never get fatherly love from that dimension. Are we together now? You may get financial advice, you may get intelligence, you may get all of this. I believe in Professor Femi. You will get the intellectual dimension. There is a dimension of God you must believe to have life. Many of us have believed him as a healer. You can be healed and still go to hell. Please hear me. Many of us have believed him as a savior. You can have, I mean, you can have, a, what do we call it, a, as a shepherd. What dimension of him have you believed? I will tell you now. Ready? There is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord, a winner, a champion, one qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says, whoever believed that, listen, whoever believes in him, that name that was given, he said he shall not perish. The word perish there is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says, whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end you, your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now 
Don't mind this, my funny friend. Where will you spend eternity? Not will you spend. You must spend it. The word eternal life there is the word divine life. Is the Greek word zoe. I know you've heard it. Many of us quote it, but just listen. The word zoe, listen. Let me describe it for you. It's a life that does not want depend on any external input for its sustenance. It's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself. Are we together now? Like you do not have to source for anything. Within that system is self-sufficiency. Within that system is the ability to be any and everything. That life can become health. That life can become victory. That life can become wisdom. So when the Bible says we have life, it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out. No. Something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you. Please, I want you to believe this. The Bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part. Whoever believes in him, the Lord, who was a savior, became a conqueror, now sits as a king. The father gave the son. The son gave his life. Your job is to receive that life. When you receive that life in reality, the Bible says certain things will begin to change. You see, the life is a programming. The moment it enters you, it deconstructs itself to different dimensions. Please listen. The life of God is not just a vague thing that comes up. No, 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 no. It is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom. It is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness. Many people have not received this life. They want healing, but they have rejected the life of God. Many people have come out for altar call. Father, I, I, I'm, I'm born again. I believe in you, this and that, but they have not received it. He said, as many as received. Brothers and sisters, you can reject it. Many seated here have rejected it. I give you my ATM card. You refuse to collect it. You can reject it. Yet you need what only my ATM card will give you. You can borrow money from Pastor Lawrence, borrow money from uh, Promise and so on and so forth. And I say, take my ATM card. The point is, you don't just take it and hold it. When you take the card, something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow. You see, the life of God is not, how do I put it now? It's not like something you just put in your pocket. All right, look at this. I have this handkerchief. So we say, I have the life of God. Do you have it? Yes, no. That's not the idea of the life of God. The idea of the life of God is like a programming. Something enters you and begins to walk in you. It is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. It starts altering your configuration. Are we together now? And the Holy Spirit is the custodian of that life. When he comes, he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom. All of a sudden, listen, because of that life, you are now spiritually alive. You can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this. Why am I always failing? You will never just know that ordinarily. It takes that life to open that awareness in you. Are we together now? It's like glasses. You all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective. No, I'm not supposed to fail like this. I can't, I can't just be taking it like that again. Something must change. No, I've seen a trend in my family. People don't get married till they are 45. I'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life. And the Bible says, he who has the son has eternal life. Zoe, God's kind of life. Now watch this. Although you have that life, it takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit, please listen, 
to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life this is where a lot of people miss it oh i have life i have life the same way you say i have a car the same way you say i have an atm card can you use it i have given it to you do you know how to activate the operation of that life do you know how to make that life work in you we have been taught that it works automatically no sir no sir you can claim to have the life and still die of sickness now this is where satan's ministry comes the thief cometh not but to steal to kill if you don't have anything he doesn't come to steal are we together now satan comes his first ministry is deception what is deception painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it so you believe that i do not have this life if i truly had this life i should not be sick are we together now if i have this life i should be doing exploits academically if i have this life now listen here is where the confusion has come in the body of christ there are those who are saying you have this life there are those who are saying you don't have this life you better fight your way into receiving it both of them are incomplete on one side you are seeing the supposed by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the bible said should be produced are we together now this is the dilemma of many christians i gave my life to christ from the day i got born again my life has not changed it's been 10 years i will tell you why eternal life is being frustrated within you because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall what die like mere men listen please listen an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave I can receive the life of God that contains health, vitality, prosperity, and still be under a curse. I tell you, hear me, brothers and sisters. Because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of God's word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But we do not know that the communications of God are twofold. There is the prophetic communication of God, speakings according to his realm of existence. But there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word. It is the nature of God to call things as though they already appear. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 2, he put it very beautifully. He said God had put all things under the subjection of man. He said God did not leave anything left, but he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we're already together now you are born again brothers and sisters 
But the truth is, if you will be sincere, you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you. So it puts believers in a dilemma. There are those who are saying, keep believing that it's gone. One day it will go. Hey, wonder shall never end. If you have that kind of ideology, you are in for trouble. And then on the other hand, there are those who act as though they really have nothing. So they are trying. They live per day. We survive today. Let's see how the war of tomorrow will be. I know that there will be all kinds of things. Are we together now? So, although they read that there is victory in Christ, the truth is they don't believe it. They just know less fight per day. They are the ones who suspect everybody and everything. If Sam looks at you like this, is a sign that he's an enemy. So, they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both are wrong. Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy. Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do. But I have a role to play. Nobody gets saved just because Jesus died. You will go to hell. There is a response. Please listen. The idea of grace does not mean not participating. No. The idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh-huh. The difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation. There is a participation that is unto the flesh. There is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing you open your heavens. When I'm tithing, I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. But in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple, but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are, are not receiving. I don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back. I want you to live victorious. If all you think is healing, you will be frustrated. If all you think is on my own, think God's life and all its content is the way, the life of God that can become any and everything, any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word and as the word opens up it shows me the dimensions of its operation and then i look out first to believe number two to respond everybody say believe say respond this is your part as a believer you when you respond to what you do not believe is a waste of time so the Bible says, whoever believes in him, you receive. But that life begins to teach you certain things. And you respond to those teachings. Please listen to me. Part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster. He's a deceptive person. And he will not, just because you have life, leave you. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter and Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware, speaking through the apostle, of the devil's strategy. Are we listening to me, please? Because many people get up bragging. I'm not under any curse. I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate 
in response to make that an experiential reality so you will still brag around and die like mere men are we together now i really believe in jesus christ and i really believe in his word but i also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases and my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this brothers and sisters there is a part there is a part that you have to play believing is not enough believing talks of conviction persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement but there must be a response your response is your action of faith so the bible says this in the book of hebrews there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god in spite of what christ has done there still remains a rest and then he says let us therefore labor this is paul in the new testament what is the idea of labor push god aside no let us find out our place of response let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is and he says whoever labors like that there is a guarantee he will enter his rest there is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body believe me it's not just by claiming you will claim and be shocked there is a way you respond remember during our time of fasting we're showing you different mysteries these are all the components that are called the life of god right he gave you life But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit. So Satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons. One, they have rejected the life. And the solution to that is an altar call. I'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering. The second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance. Never trivialize the role of deception. In a man's destruction deception the first deception is that you don't need to do anything again oh brothers and sisters hear me i fear god it's a big deception as free as salvation claims to be if you do not respond you are going to hell there is always a participation that's what we call koinonia everybody say participation if you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of God's life, there is a participation. If there will ever be prosperity, there is a participation. Now, the participation is a response of faith. God credits it as a response of faith, not an addition to what he has done. It's a compliment. So, he would see a sick body and say, your faith... You believed I am able to heal you. You were convinced based on the report you had. And now, I gave you an instruction. Waiting for your participation. You got up. Your faith. He calls it your faith. So what is your faith? Faith is the name given to the action you take. Based on your conviction of God's word. Believing is not faith. No, 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 no. Believing is the first step to faith. You can believe without having faith. A believer is not a possessor. A believer who responds is a possessor. There are so many people, listen to me, who are trusting God for all kinds of things here. I'm teaching you how to get results tonight. God is not a herbalist. There is a participation. Hey, Jimmy, this is a gift for you. What is he supposed to do? Watch this, his response. Now, he's standing up. It's a sign that he believes me. I can choose to hide it. Please sit down, sir. Sorry I'm using you. Hope, I'm sorry I'm just doing this game with your husband. Hallelujah. 
hey jimmy do you believe i'm having a phone and that phone is for you if you believe it walk up to me faith this is faith the walking to me although he has not seen it so he's putting my integrity to the line it's up to me to prove that i'm not lying so i bring it out if he comes to me listen if he comes to me and i say ah i'm playing he believed i'm the one who is a liar and the bible said god look for anybody who is greater than him so that he will show you he's not playing games are we together now let's look at one scripture thank you sir romans chapter 8 please romans chapter 8 let's look at verse 35 romans 8 35 just that one scripture and then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister romans chapter 8 35 okay give us from verse uh, 32 32 thank you everyone please read if you are a christian if you are a child of god this is good friday well even if you are not a child of god read i will soon make an altar call one to read he that spared not stop who is the he now god is trying to make a statement and is tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before it's like saying he that built this bridge in kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something so in case you doubt what i'm about to do find out whether i did that thing or not he's about to make a statement and he's saying don't you dare doubt me for what i'm about to say he that did not spare his what own son but delivered him up for who what's the next statement how shall he not with him also freely give us what this is god speaking he said look at me your healing is a lesser thing i gave jesus what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if i did not if i spared my son then you will know that there are some things i can spare but i carried my son i gave him and now i have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking god this my this i've been bleeding for six months non-stop and god said if i spared not jesus i will not spare anything whatever it would take me to prove myself i will do it if it means me killing somebody i will do it i i gave my son who will i not be able to kill listen this is the basis for conviction so every time the devil is trying to say look 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 will that prophecy work just remember jesus jesus begged the father to have mercy the father refused so listen jesus said father reconsider the father said you are joking stay there and now god is saying i want to bless you and the devil is saying no and jesus is saying god is saying just believe me and watch how i will do anything it takes is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am yeah. is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am Hallelujah If the father Did not give Jesus It's like a man Listen It's like a man who vowed to punish every offender And he saw his wife And the guy said I'm a just person And he punished his wife then somebody throws a and says, oh God, you know we are Nigerians. What do you think he's going to do? You say, that's my wife inside the gutter. I'm a military man. This is my wife. I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you. Listen. If it took God 
refusing to even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake then I assure you whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night hallelujah do you believe me we are going to pray and say Lord help my own belief that listen 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 that spirit that makes me keep wondering can God do it listen don't don't make that foolish statement tonight I I was praying on the tonight before I came here I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding if you know the story behind that dear woman she shared it here all kinds of things when I met her the devil was almost destroying her life had five broad that was almost big like the size of a baby she shared her testimony here supernaturally that devil of five broad came out the way a woman gives birth it came out like that without surgery and people were saying ah can you marry time has gone time has gone nonsense i prayed for the card and to the shame of the devil we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of may <laughs> hallelujah brothers and sisters your limitation is self-imposed satan is a deceiver he comes to you and says but can they really hear your voice we are going to pray the only prayer i want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say lord i lift my faith i'm ready to respond based on my conviction lift your voice and begin to pray have a part to play I lift up that wall of unbelief please pray pray you are able are you praying sense the anointing of the spirit i'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship. Mountain of cancer. Mountain of mediocrity. Second Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight, in the name of Jesus. The faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. 
I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond. Please listen. Do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4? Don't turn there. The Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful. Please say, Jimmy, sit down, sir. Watch this. It says they saw a man who had been there. And he, he, he called on them for arms. And he thought they were going to give him arms. Peter and John. And he, they said, silver and gold have I none. He said, but such as I have. Listen, listen. I give unto you. What did he have? He said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The man was there. Sit down. He was there. Nothing happened. Why? Response. Did he believe Peter? Yes. Did he get a miracle? No. Why? He, he could not respond. And the Bible says, when Peter saw him, he said, who taught you faith? He held his hand and said, respond. 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 And the Bible says, Peter held his hand and he leaping stood. The power of God is released at the point of response. Not before. Never before. At the point of response. When I began to minister here, the Lord was speaking to my spirit. Who gave me a guarantee that the power of God will move? But as I began to speak, I put pressure. It's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not. God will not just get up and act. Listen, it was God that put this miracle service. You're leaving your house to come is enough response already. Are you listening to me? You're going to say, Lord, I put pressure on your integrity. You asked us to come, we have come. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be afraid of saying it. Pray. Lord, you ask us to come. You are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service. Now, oh God, we are here. Put pressure on his integrity. We have come, oh God, that you prove yourself. Shake it up, Baba Bara da Bala da Bala. Shake it up, Braska da Bala da Basi. We have come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now keep standing, everybody. Before we continue, there are people here. I don't want you to waste your time, and I don't want to waste your time. There are people here, inside and outside, in all the overflows outside. You are yet to make this decision. The Bible says, this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. He said, and that life is in his son. He says, he who has the son has that life. Please, we're out of time. We have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now. Wherever you are, you are saying, man of God, I have heard your word. I have been struggling with this thing. But tonight, I truly want to dedicate everything, my all to Jesus Christ. Or you are saying, man of God, I have come out for an altar call before. But for some reason, honestly, the pressures of life have pushed me and I need to make my way straight with the Lord. I'm tired of where I am. Those two categories of people, inside and outside, I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now. God bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me God bless you. Run to Jesus. Oh, win that war. Win that war tonight. This is an issue of your destiny. Koinonia, can you appreciate them? This is a harvest for the King of Glory. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired of living my life my own way, mismanaging my life. 
on this Easter Friday I give everything to you keep coming you are saying Lord Easter Friday you die for God so loved me he died for me I'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling there are still people outside please run and catch up quickly quickly as the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and say join them make your way quickly you're saying Lord I'm tired tired of habits tired of addictions run to the cross come running come running come running to the mercy seat. keep coming hallelujah all of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pinching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you sleep away You don't have to be afraid No man condemns you The mercy The mercy Look at me all of you in front some of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner i've been crucified with christ and i have his life right now jesus has paid the price i receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you 
this is a response to what jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah i pray for you i declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty cloth in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast so you will join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i'd like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening god bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say lord my time for visitation is here i won't give up no i won't give up I'll keep pressing on till my answer comes. I won't give up, Lord. I won't give up. I'll keep holding on until my change comes, Lord. I won't give up, Lord. I won't give up. I keep holding on till my answer comes. I won't give up, Lord. I won't give up. I keep pressing on until my change comes. Please write your prayer requests very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of of i understand that koinonia is being streamed live right now can we honor god for that yes it's been streamed live we appreciate the media for their creativity and for all our online people we love you the same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the lord jesus christ so please quickly quickly please your prayer request listen for those of us who are just coming i i don't want you to think this is some ritual believe me god answers prayers here god gave us a revelation hallelujah and the revelation was the revelation of hezekiah hallelujah when he took the threat letter and the bible says he put it before the lord and said lord behold their threatenings so please write it very quickly and then ushers let's be very fast please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her john leave her whatever she wants to do just let her do hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones please make sure the online community participate there's a god that answers prayers here remember we spoke about faith those outside ushers help them if i were you i'll begin to prophesy over my request and say i wrote you because you must live my life or you must come into my life
Hallelujah. Now please begin to pass your requests very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. My goodness. I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place. That's why I'm saying we should hurry up. We feel the rain of your love. We see the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. See the rain of your love. Feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. So let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open? Flood gates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the flood gates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the flood. Hallelujah. Please pass the prayer request very quickly. Once we start, we're just going to move. Um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in Elorin to Ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between Kwara state and Ekiti state and I saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people listen 132 years 120 years it's like nobody died except they were 100 and something and in my mind i was saying guinness book of record has been lying to us for long and the, the interesting part of it listen is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we are pastors we went to minister in equity and we are going back to the north but we discerned that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days we played he was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying Ejimi. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him so they seed into his life 
appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah. when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures i thought it was the wife of the man when he was in his old age you know like ketura that was the one and only woman he married that means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something alive these guys can bear me witness no glasses no crutches no nothing i said what kind of grace is this brothers and sisters there are mysteries you've heard me say this thing and when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song i don't know what it was i don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know i was i don't know if i was sharing with them i felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as i was feeling i knew i got this thing immediately she got it i told her i said let's snap i held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah I, I was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had i said what kind of grace is this we went to minister in a university called afe babalola university the man himself is 86 years alive and doing well in those regions if you are 80 years you are still a child believe me then when we were returning i saw the shock of my life 141 years one how many 41 i saw the obituary he just died 141 i said i got it let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life no see listen if you don't believe in transference of grace you will die young don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating i didn't see any hospital around there i just saw a church and people is you can be 190 and not be able to talk but you are 141 the guy 132 was still serving as a man of god You are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife the the mama tapped me in this place once you are 60 years you hold crutches what cause is that i always believed it but now that i've seen it ah there's that song that says my eyes have seen don't play it my eyes have seen it there are many strange things that will fall today listen if you care you can receive if you don't when we were coming we were in the plane and the plane was bouncing like a football i just remember that old woman i said plane you are joking i'm surrounded by too many mysteries please believe me hallelujah 86 years still a lecturer 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom pray and say lord my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me
Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families, altars that have tied the destinies of men down. I'm going to pray. I tell you, I sense a heavy anointing. Please, the moment that happens, I like you not, don't just fall and stand up. Begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of God. Father, your word says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. It says there shall be holiness. And it said the sons of Jacob shall receive their possessions. Therefore I pray, every spirit, every altar, every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three i command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what i hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand leave the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction I see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted. Sheba Babakata. Altars. 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 Right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Bring them out. Those strange altars. Strange altars. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. The Lord is saying He is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 
right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding an angel is touching you he's bringing a miracle for you right now that's what i see i see like cold sensation coming to your head a miracle and as it's happening to her may it happen to you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ lift your hands and begin to pray over your request let it rain please pray go ahead and just prophesy and say lord this marks the end of it the Bible says, believe in the Lord your God. Pray, pray. Don't look at me. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. Shabba baba In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we turn. Go ahead and pray. Lord, my request is turned into a testimony. I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place. In the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth. We command the firmaments. We command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request. We lift every burden placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit and we set these ones free in the name of Jesus, mighty and everlasting God, standing upon your promise to us, upon this altar, the heavenly portals opened in this place. We command a performance of the requests, the desires placed here tonight in the name of Jesus. We decree the heavens answer speedily everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb receive in the name of jesus promotion from on high receive in the name of jesus an end to demonic oppression it happens now in the name of jesus blind eyes open deaf ears open destinies moved forward 
in the name of Jesus satanic burdens removed in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord because speedily according to the seasons of life they receive a performance in the matchless name of Jesus we decree amen father hallelujah hallelujah please rise up on your feet and receive the prophecy you can I saw a spirit and, and I'm praying for the students now please listen when I was outside ministering I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names I pray for everyone here the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus shake it kappa shake rosata the kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart lord you know that i wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now The force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness, it comes upon your life right now. That spirit that kills people at the prime of their life, when they labor and about to enter, it takes their lives. It leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you Two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it all 
Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. I will never forget. You know, Jimmy knows the story. In 2007, I remember that time I went to collect a loan from a bank. Remember the story? I went to collect a loan from the bank. We had done everything. And then when it was now time for them to give me the loan, they embarrassed me. I was humiliated. The same people who were helping me, it was as if a charm came upon them. And I looked at that person. And I vowed that till I die, till I go to be with the Lord, I will not collect loan from anybody living or dead. I made that determination from the depth of my heart. I said, Lord, if you cannot honor me, let me die like that. I pray for someone here. See, listen, if doors are closing against you, it's demonic. Don't ever say it's because I don't know so, so, so. Bad. If, if the person knew me, it's a lie. There is a mantle. The Bible says everyone loved Esther who looked at her. Like a garment, you can wear it. I pray that honor that brings receptivity, receive it right now. Oh, come on. Your amen is not loud enough. Receive it right now. Hallelujah. The Bible says you shall be as a delightsome land. You know what a delightsome land is? Well desired. In other words, at any point you are seen, you are invited. I don't know who has disqualified you, but I pray for you. They may use your background. They may use whatever. Let grace qualify you tonight. Let grace qualify you tonight. Koinonia, I pray for you. Honor that you have never seen in your life. From even people who can give birth to you, begin to receive it. Strange honor in high places. Strange honor in high places. In the name of Jesus. Wave your hands and give God all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever you have started, listen, something just came in my heart. Whatever you have started that ended prematurely, because this what I'm there is an anointing for what I'm telling you. Whatever you start, I don't care what it is, whether it is relationship or whatever, and it ended, but not by God. We put life back to it right now. I say it again. Whatever you started that ended but not by God by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give God praise. My goodness. I wish we had time. I wish we had time. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.